got a feeling I'm about to get put on I got a feeling That something finna take off I got a feeling And it won't be too much longer Got a feeling Coming up on the Welcome back to another episode of Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip hop music. I am Cornbread Capone, and today my very special guest is somebody who I've been waiting to talk to for a long time. Actually, we go a long way back. We actually go back 25 years. I don't get to say that every day, so when I do get a chance to say that, I want to point that out. I've been going back with this brother 25 years. Uh, when we first met, we were a part of an organization that was called Mo Blaze Entertainment. Mo Blaze. Shout out what? to goddamn Toby in the Jungle Funk Machine. Shout out to T Wheel. Shout out to everybody who was involved. But man, from that point, my special guest went on to be a member of the Set Boys. And people who remember the set boys for the work that they did, the foundation that they put down as far as Beaumont rap is concerned, I must point that out. If you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Jay Blue. How are you doing, my brother? I'm doing wonderful, fantastic. Just so y'all know, look, I got an old English, but I don't like to change it. So. <laughs> Wow. Uh, let's uh, let's let's go back with the because when I met you, when I met you, I was 18 years old. I was one foot in rap and one foot in the streets. How long had you been making music? Were you making music seriously before that? Or or was it something you didn't really take serious at first? Okay, first off, you got to tell me how old you were at that time. I was 18 in 1998 when I met you. Okay, so at that time, I had just started, I just met Kucha. I just got out of the prison, he just got out of prison. So I, yeah. I was 20. So I didn't know. I had been there too, Chief. We was doing some three shit at that time. We were not even rapping. <laughs> but I, I eventually met him too because he was yeah, coming yeah, around rapping. At that time, we weren't even rapping yet. We okay. Was, we had met, because I met Tucci when I was 18 and he was 20 because he had just got out of prison and I had just got out of jail. So, 98. I can't count that good, y'all. Well, okay. I was like 18, 20, maybe, whatever. Oh, shit. I don't... So you weren't really taking rap serious at that no, point? No, I just met two and me we had just... Oh, that's what happened. We had just started and... We was fucking with this nigga across the street, and that nigga had them niggas dressed up in fucking new edition clothes. <laughs> Talking about rap this song. Oh, and then two chicks just got out of prison, and he walked across the street like, hey, what y'all doing? And I was like, man, we up here rapping, but these niggas want niggas to wear new edition clothes. And he had just got out of prison, and I just got out of jail. So we both was like, he ain't wearing that shit. Why new edition clothes? This was like 98, 99. Right. So think about rappers, Big Daddy Kane. Oh, okay. Rappers with a certain look. Yeah. Okay. So they wanted big rappers in suits and shit. Right. You know, this was like 1998. Like, so I want to ask you this. When did y'all decide that y'all were going to form the Set Boys? Because that's something that I wasn't around to know about. I just kind of came back home one time on a visit and found out that y'all were a group called the Set Boys, but didn't really know how it came together. Oh, it was two to love and they blew first. Like, I had, I got out of jail, he got out of prison, and I ended up going back to jail for another time. 
And then when I got out, me and him did two to love and day blue. And then my brother and Dahlia came back from the military. Right. And both of them right and seen. So you know, a moment that I will always remember that I feel is a big part in Beaumont music history was that uh the long drive that y'all did because i saw y'all on there and when i saw y'all on there i said man if i was there i would have been a part of this shit yeah, you know I, what i'm saying but I, I wasn't living here at the time yeah i just got out of prison that's why i didn't have a verse on the long drive in front of magnolia Garden. right because i just got out of prison so i didn't have a verse too i already had his first row and everything so by the time I got out, the shit was done. And like when I got out, the shit was like two days later. So I, I didn't have, I had time, but all the shit was already done. Yeah. So I was just in the video. If you, if you would have to say your best time making music, and because I know you was moving around, y'all was touring, y'all was going different places, y'all been to to uh, Denver, y'all been to LA, y'all been to a whole bunch of places. Y'all actually shot videos outside the state. Y'all was running with Mama West, God bless her soul. Y'all was y'all was doing a whole lot. What would you say your best time or your most fun that you had? Um, I would have to say that was in Longview. When I don't want to say this with Corey, my bad now. But the <laughs> Corey of uh, Pimp C Sun, that nigga was like fucking 12. We in fucking Longview. He just running around the fucking hotel. We, he just running around that motherfucker. He coming there, mama sitting in the room. She was like, hey, baby, what you doing? He was like, nothing, man. And just running around the hotel. And that night, we had the greatest time ever. That, that was one of the greatest nights. That nigga that poured, that shit was funny as fuck. Man, um, I know we would probably be here a long time, but I, you know, I'd be remiss if I did not bring up Tucci. Uh, for those who probably didn't know him personally or didn't have a chance to be around him. What would you say about Tucci? Real loyal, respect. Yeah. That's real. Uh, I want to ask you this too. Well, let's go here. I ask everybody this question, so I'm going to ask you, does Jay Blue have a top 10 best rappers? No. No. Why? It's everybody different, so I can't never put them in the category. It's different eras, it's different decades, so you know, like, so everybody different in their time. Hmm. Now, a lot of people within our age group would not agree with music right now for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about music today? It don't bother me because it's a time change. It's a time shift. Everything not going to be the same. You're not going to agree. Like when we were growing up, we was like, man, I got that family member. Same way we are. It's a change with the time. So it don't bother me. It is what it is. Mm. Like, that's what they like, and that's what they listen to, and that's what they do. It is what it is. I want to ask you, uh, I know you probably hear about this shit uh, via the internet or via somebody's conversation because somebody somewhere is talking about it. How do you feel about what's going on with the industry right now as far as the the Sean Combs situation. Mm. 
It is what it is. We got offered a lot. It's up to you to accept the offer. Like, it is what it is. It's up to you to accept the offer that you get offered. Yeah. And I got, I had to tell somebody that the other day because when that happened, somebody ran up on me in the streets at a store. And they, they shook my hand and they looked me dead in my eyes and they said, Bread, I realize why you don't want to play the industry game. I get it now. And I say, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, But you also got to be the person that's willing to do any and everything. Bread, mama told us, Don't fuck with these people, don't fuck with these people. And she was fucking with both of them people. Right. So think about that. Don't fuck with them. Don't fuck with them. But I'm fucking with both of them. Mm. <laughs> wow. It's just you know, it's, hey, you hey, know, hey, you know, hey, it's you know that it's it's a reason. It's a reason why I moved the way I moved. Yeah, that's just uh like she don't got. That's why I say respect loyalty. That's why I say what I say. Like you gotta pay attention to words. Niggas don't pay niggas don't pay attention to words. They pay attention to fun and fabulousness. Mm. Like if you pay attention to words on anything that's going on in your life, you'll figure out a lot of shit if you just read what's on the paper. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's some game for it. I hope they uh, understand the game that you are bestowing on them right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I do. I, I have to. I have to ask this question because it's on my mind and it's on my heart. Uh, if you could, or if you would, what would you like to say about Miss Sharon? Yeah. Greatest mother I ever had. That's my baby. You know what I'm talking about? She, hey, yo, yeah, I was just there. Uh, yo, we y'all, we drip drip. That's my nigga, uh, Country Wayne. I'm fucking with the dog. I like that. That was some great shit. Y'all, drip. Yeah, I like that. That was cool shit. But y'all, that's my lady. The niggas already know. I, I, I got a, uh, Sitting there by somebody about that right now. They know who it is, y'all. Yeah. I'll, I'll be sitting back thinking about because there's so many memories over over the course of yeah. 25 years. And I've been all my life, though. That's why I'm like, oh. And it's certain. Miss Sharon used to talk in cold sometimes. And you had to be there to understand the cold. Uh, no, it, 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 this once I'm gonna bring this I'm gonna bring this one situation up, and you gonna know what I'm talking about. She was talking about uh, men and women, the act of, but she wasn't saying it directly. She was saying it with cold words. Yeah, and she used this word that make me laugh to this day every time I think about it. She said, "When you're getting some sprumper." <laughs> And I was like, wait a minute. I was like, hey, I don't know what that word And I was like, yo, what in the world? <laughs> but the way, no, but the I didn't understand why she said that, but it it, it translated to a, a woman's anatomy, basically. And so I was like, oh wow. But I don't know what that means, but it sounds Spanish. It sounds Spanish. It do. I'm sorry. It do. I know not no disrespect to y'all, but oh, I don't know what God. she was saying when she said proper. Hey. You're right. She say that shit all the time. Hey, man. I ain't know what the fuck that <laughs> shit was. <laughs> no, by the way she was using it. It meant it the woman's anatomy, but I don't know what that actual word means itself. But now, when okay. she said it, it you was so. Right now. Hey, I love all my Spanish, Puerto Ricans, Caribbeans. I love y'all. What does proper mean? Let us know. 
please let us know in the comments if that's a if that's an actual thing. But when she said that, that shit was fun. Hey. And that don't mean shit. <laughs> <laughs> To my Spanish culture is proper, a really motherfucking word. Oh, Let me man. know, baby. Man, Miss Sharon, Miss Sharon, yeah. rest in paradise. That's my baby. All I right. Seen, I want to ask you this. Yeah. Um, you're not making music anymore. What are your plans now? What are you? What, oh, are, what are you planning for? I, I, I got. Um, I, I, I'm working with my daughter. La La Bang, if you can play that for us, that'll be real good. You know what I'm saying? Let them hit my daughter, see what she's working with. I would like to interview, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, can, you get, know what I can just hit her up. I just need to play it first. Like, if you play it first, then they'll be like, oh, y'all, drip. I like my nigga in the country, man. I like that nigga, but they drip shit. That was some good shit. Well, when you're riding around uh, now, wh who do you listen to now? Or do you I'm listen to music I'm, at all? Sometimes I'm riding around, I be listening to my nigga Anthony Q. Anthony Q, who is that? He's a singer? Yeah, he a singer from Mississippi, man. Okay, R&B? Yeah, he an R&B. Okay, so how do you feel about the state of R&B? Do you feel like we're getting back to what it used to be or, or do we still got some ways to go with r and oh, you know? No, I ain't heard no niggas that got real voices that can sing. Man, I think Snoop doing good with October London. It's like, a young I, I, guy. Who, who are the new male singers? I don't know. I know October London is one of them. I know they got a bunch of, of young, of I, new I, ones. I, I'm used to the KC's. The tanks, the niggas that got like niggas that can really sing. Right. If you can't sing in concert and song the same as you do on, record. on radio, I ain't fucking with you. Right. Well, they got some new guys that's out, man. I just got a uh outside of October London, about, I don't know. And these dudes I'm talking about, I, I heard the niggas uh, in concert by themselves and they the truth. Oh yeah? Yeah. Anthony Q, that's a good nigga. That nigga though. Yeah. Oh shout out, man. Big up to them, man. Shout uh, out my nigga Anthony Q, man. That that nigga there cold. That thing is good. Boy, that nigga can sing like your grandma wanted nigga to play. Well, I wanna ask you this last question. Uh do you have any advice for the up and coming artists, the artists that might be looking at this, getting good game or getting a good laugh off of our conversation? But still looking for that avenue or that light to to get on and do their thing. Do you have any advice? Yeah, same thing for all of the niggas. Be yourself, nigga. Do what you do that make you feel comfortable with yourself and your life. Man, I appreciate you coming through, man, because uh, this is much needed, and you know, uh, I feel like since I have this platform. Uh, and I'm able to tell not just my story, but our story. We might have to do this again for a Mo Blaze uh, type of function because my plan is to talk yeah. to Toby and T. Will and, and other brothers who was involved with Mo Blaze because that story needs to be told. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I Before we leave here, I want to say Tucci Lope and Mama Sharon rest in paradise. You know what I'm saying? From me to you, it's always love. On behalf of Mr. J. Blue, I am Cornbread Capone. This is Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip-hop music. And until next time, everybody, peace and love, because that's what the world needs.